Operation Bagration, the 1944 summer offensive, crushed German Army Group Center, after which more and more units were sent there from Hungarian First Army's sector. A month later, in late July, the Soviets attacked the Hungarian positions and soon broke through, pushing back 16th and 7th Infantry Divisions. The counterattack of 2nd Armored Division, with 4 Tiger, 8 Panzer Mark IV and other tanks, could not restore the line, so the Hungarians gradually retreated to the Prince Eugen line. This did not last, Nadvorna was lost, 16th Infantry Division withdrew to Delatin, while General Berekfi was replaced by General Béla Miklós, and 7th Corps was put under German command. It nonetheless retreated to the mountains to avoid being pushed elsewhere, but as 6th Corps was also moving southwards, a gap opened between the two army corps. 2nd Armored covered the retreat, the Prince Eugen line was given up, all troops withdrew to the Hunyadi line. As the front moved closer to Hungary's borders, three more infantry divisions, 6th, 10th and 13th, were mobilized and sent there, along with 3rd Corps, to prevent the loss of the vital passes. The Germans were not pleased, but General Miklós refused to place a liaison officer on his staff, preventing them from influencing his decisions. Back home, the mass deportation of Jews commenced, at least in the countryside. The official reason was the need for fresh labor in Germany, but soon domestic and foreign notabilities, among them Archbishop Mincenti, the King of Sweden, and President Roosevelt, protested, so after a Crown Council meeting, Regent Horthy removed pro-German officials, stopped the deportations in Budapest, and ordered the 1st Armored Division to the capital to intervene if necessary. On the front, the situation was becoming desperate. In early August, renewed Soviet attacks against 6th Corps were eventually beaten back, and counterattacks retook the lost positions in the Hunyadi line. In two weeks, losses reached 3,400 men, with 627 killed, but the main Soviet forces were busy elsewhere, so there was time for some changes. The now very weak 18th and 19th Reserve Divisions and 7th Infantry Division were dissolved, their units were used to fill up the other units, while German 4th Mountain Division arrived to assist. This last formation, along with 25th Infantry Division, were soon ordered to move to the Sekai Corner, so they left 1st Army, which still relied on three defensive lines. Down south, on the Romanian border, significant changes took place in late August. 2nd and 3rd Ukrainian fronts hit Army Group South Ukraine, crushing its two German and two Romanian armies. Over 100,000 prisoners were taken, after which Marshal Antonescu was removed from power in Bucharest, Romania switched sides and quickly declared war on Germany, taking advantage of the situation. Remnants of German 6th and 8th armies were retreating towards the southern Carpathians, but they were too weak to form a new cohesive line. They had to hold the mountain passes to prevent another collapse, but in the meantime, some of the advancing Soviet forces turned south and forced Bulgaria to capitulate as well, even though that country was not at war with the Soviet Union. It also declared war on Germany in early September, and sent its newly formed 1st Army to the front. Hungarian military and political leaders were still refusing to face reality. They continued to hope that Soviet forces could be stopped at the Carpathians and held back until the Western Allies arrived. This was just a dream, as events would soon show. Romania broke off diplomatic relations and demanded the return of Northern Transylvania, which led to the activation of Hungarian 2nd Army. Its weak units, comprised of local formations under 9th Corps, were reinforced with 20th and 25th Infantry, 27th Light, and 2nd Armored Divisions, along with replacement units. Its main objective was the capture of southern Transylvania and the closure of all mountain passes before the Soviets got there. 
Due to these transfers, 1st Army was weakened. The 27th Light Division was replaced with the 66th Border Guard Group, roughly in regimental strength, so 6th Corps had to shorten its line, which now ran through Tatarov and Chomyak. 2nd Mountain Brigade was sent north to 3rd Corps to defend the Lubkov Pass, where Soviet probing attacks had already taken place, mainly against 23rd and 24th Panzer Divisions. In mid-September, as 2nd Mountain was leaving its positions, a Soviet attack penetrated the line and they could not be thrown back with available forces, so 1st Army ordered a retreat to the Arpad line, which was completed by the end of the month. To the south, German 8th Army managed to stabilize the front by early September, extracting five of its divisions from the earlier encirclement at Yashi. It occupied the main passes, Tölgyes, Gimes, and Oitoz, while the Seker corner was defended by the Hungarian 2nd and 3rd replacement divisions and local border guard units, and Brasov was covered by the German 4th Mountain Division. These units were subordinated to German 6th Army, as it had no intact units left. To its west, ad hoc formations and Luftwaffe ground personnel guarded the other passes, but they didn't stand a chance against the Red Army, which was speeding west, in order to break into Transylvania from the south. Hungarian 2nd Army under General Lajos Veres was ordered to advance from Kolozsvár towards Torda and the southern passes. It received two replacement divisions, two newly mobilized mountain replacement brigades, 2nd Armored and 25th Infantry Division from 1st Army and the 8th SS Cavalry Division. To its west, the hurriedly activated replacement units and other formations were gathered under 3rd Army, led by General Józef Heslényi. It was to move towards Arad and the same southern passes that had to be secured at all cost. It also had to establish a link with Army Group F in the Balkans and create a continuous line. However, this was next to impossible due to a lack of available units. These plans quickly collapsed as the third Ukrainian front reached Turnu Severin and the Iron Gates on the Danube already on the 5th of September. They moved much faster than the Hungarian or German divisions. On the same day, Hungarian 2nd Army launched its attack from Kolozsvár with 2nd Armored and the replacement divisions. The appearance of Hungarian armor surprised the Romanian defenders, who lacked anti-tank units and were forced to retreat. Morale on the Hungarian side was high, perhaps for the first time in this war, mainly because they were finally fighting for the recovery of previously lost territories. However, the advance was not to last, as Soviet forces had already passed the Red Tower and Vulcan passes and captured the city of Brasov, pushing back German 4th Mountain Division. They proceeded to the Maros River, where the Hungarian advance stalled, so the newly arrived 25th Infantry Division took up positions there to defend northern Transylvania. The Battle of Torda began with the first Soviet attack on the 14th of September. This was thrown back, but the next day a major attack commenced, which only 2nd Armored Division was able to stop. Three days later, a counterattack started with 25th Infantry Division and 10th Assault Gun Battalion, which reached the original line but could not advance further. On the 22nd of September, three Soviet and one Romanian divisions attacked, along with a tank brigade, during which the Hungarians lost 1,000 men but still kept Torda. The next day, the 23rd Panzer Division relieved the exhausted 2nd Armored, but it soon had to leave to Nagyvárad due to a Soviet breakthrough elsewhere. 25th Infantry Division remained at Torda until early October, when it had to retreat to avoid encirclement. To the west, Hungarian 3rd Army launched its own offensive towards Arad with the 1st Armored Division, the 7th Assault Gun Battalion, and replacement infantry and cavalry units. The city fell on the 13th of September. Hungarian forces then reached Lippa, destroying 67 T-34 tanks, while losing 8 Stug 3 assault guns. However, 
Soviet forces counterattacked and overwhelmed the undertrained and under-equipped replacement units, which had to give up Arad on the 22nd of September. The Soviet offensive then stopped, but another one was in the works, and this would once again push back Axis forces. I will talk about this offensive and the loss of Northern Transylvania in the next episode. Thank you for watching.